Hello, everyone. This is Coach Clayton, and this is the Women's Empowerment Interview episode. And today we have Latoya, and she's going to discuss some of the obstacles she's overcome and uh, the business that she started, and just give us um, a brief look into her her journey. Hi, Latoya. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm well in yourself. I'm well. I'm well. Good. Glad to be here. <laughs> very good. Very good. Um, Latoya, the reason why I created this video podcast is just to provide inspiration to women, because we know like with the pandemic and all of these things going on, I think that it's important to be part of, you know, the solution to providing inspiration versus like, you know, negativity. So welcome, mm -hmm. Latoya. Thank you. Yeah. So Latoya, tell us a little bit about yourself. Let, let us know, you know, what are some of the obstacles that you had to overcome in life and we'll Ooh. go from there. Okay. Um, so pretty much the obstacles start from birth, right? Um, as most of us, you know, with everything being, um, what's the word I want to use, like more commercialized, like everyone's like, okay, let's deal with your childhood traumas. Let's deal with your, um, uh, get therapy. You know, that's like the not the new wave, but it's more prevalent now. Yeah. So I'm gonna say, yeah, the child, the the obstacle started from birth. Being born mm -hmm. to my mom, she was 16, um, yeah. absent father. So it started from from there. And then you know, one of the goals was just making sure that I knew I didn't come from a healthy family, but make sure a healthy family comes from me. Mm -hmm. Um, an obstacle. I in my journey, I've learned that we don't overcome obstacles. Mm -hmm. We just build up endurance for the next set of obstacles. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. by that, I mean, in, in, in part of my process, uh, got married at 21, 22, mm -hmm. well, got married at 23 okay. and my first child at 22, mm -hmm. 21, 22. Um, and currently right now I'm in the middle of a divorce. So, okay. you know, I have two children, um, but you know, with all the accolades that come with me as a person, um, going to school pregnant, working full time, um, making sure that I thrive in the darkest places in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I had to be in a place in my life where I realized what I deserve and what's best for me and mm -hmm. choosing me first. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I have a master's degree in health science. I'm like one class away from completing my doctorate degree. And so that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, even in the darkest places, I still feel the need to thrive. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a coping mechanism, maybe not, but great things always come out of the ground when I'm going through the toughest times in my life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, Latoya, you have said that you um, that your mom had you at 16 years old. I can mm -hmm. relate, believe it or not, my mother had me at 17 years old okay. so I can relate yeah. <laughs> what were what were um what are some of the things that you learned as far as parenting that you said that you will not repeat with your children having an open line of communication um growing up with my mom um, and we talk about it now, so I don't mind talking about it openly. Yeah. But growing up with my mom, it was, you can talk to me about anything. And you probably could relate. It's like, you can talk to me about anything. Then you talk and then you get backlash for talking, <laughs> right? And so, you know, even in my, in like, I'll be 35 this year. Mm -hmm. And so talking to my mom, she's like, you're so good with your kids. And I was like, I don't know why I'm so good with my kids because you didn't really teach me anything. <laughs> and so- I've in my healing journey is really being able to talk about and let people know mm -hmm. is really being able to talk about and let people know mm -hmm. that at the end of the day, um, I'm not, I'm just figuring it out as, as I go. I don't have the book. I don't have the tools. I mean, I wrote, I'm, I'm also an author. I'm published a few books oh, on Amazon nice. and, um, Typically things get birthed out. There was a, like a life story book that was supposed to get birthed out, but I guess it's on hold because yeah. the story is still, the story mm -hmm. is still in process. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote a book about breastfeeding and it's like, that's my breastfeeding journey, but mm -hmm. I don't know anything about breastfeeding as far before having children. Yeah. That wasn't something that, you know, came from me. So I, I produced that, mm -hmm. you know? And so at the end of the day, I just want to be able to make sure that my children are in a, this is the safe space. This yeah. is the space. Mommy is the space where they can 
misbehave, yeah. where they can act up, where mm-hmm. they can learn to manage their emotions. Yeah. And I'm often, I'm not as vocal about it on Facebook. I'm a little bit more, I'm on TikTok. I'm a little bit more vocal there because it's like, you never know who's going to see your stuff. Yeah. So uh, interestingly enough, I'm in a space where I truly believe, like we teach them how to address adults. So I, 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 came, I came from a family where it's like, I'm going to be this hard on you because the world is this hard on you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, at the end of the day, if I can teach you Mm -hmm. that this is how you should be treated, you'll know what to demand from the world. Mm -hmm. And pretty much I want to raise world changers, like get out there, change the game. My daughter's a gymnast. My son is an avid gamer. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, he's seven years old. I got him doing coding and the things that just changing, just changing the topic, right. Where Mm -hmm. it's like, even when my daughter started gymnastics, I'm always elated to tell this story because when she started gymnastics, there was no Gabby Douglas. There was no Simone Biles. There was nothing, nobody for her to look up to, you know, who's doing gymnastics. It was just mm-hmm. something that she asked for. So I'm very, I'm always inclining my ears to the things that they say and mm-hmm. taking it and running with it. Um, yeah. They're little entrepreneurs mm-hmm. at heart too. So they have small businesses which one day will be big businesses you know Mm -hmm. um and I speak speaking life into them is like nobody you know you get to a point in life where you can't blame your parents for the things that went wrong Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so yeah I mean even in this journey I've I've come to learn like getting to meet my dad I've met him like three times in my life Mm -hmm. and so I graduated my master's he like shows up to the graduation and from there it was a journey (laughs) Yes. It's been a journey, I'm going to tell yeah, you, but it's definitely putting all the broken pieces back together. I mean, I grew up in the house. My mom mm-hmm. has three kids. I'm the oldest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have two brothers. We have different dads. Mm-hmm. So there's three different dads there. But even now, as adults, we're talking and we're like, hey, as a child, you know, you used to do this to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that hurt me for a long time. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want for my kids to be able to communicate effectively and not just communicate effectively, but say how they feel. Yes. And I often tell them, if you can tell an adult how you feel mm-hmm. and they don't listen, you just know you can't tell that adult anymore, but keep that's telling people right. how you feel. That's right. That's keep telling right. people how you feel. Because mm-hmm. my whole thing is if an, if an adult wants to run over a child, there's much more to say about that adult. So yeah, yeah I'm, you know, just really wanting them to be their own advocate. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's, you probably could identify growing up to a teen mom, you really miss out on being your own advocate. There's no one really advocating for you. It's like, you just, and me being the oldest child is like, I just knew that I didn't want to, I spoke at a a young, a a, a summit for young girls. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was funny because I told him, I said, my only aspiration when I was like their age was to not have a baby at 16. Mm -hmm. It was never to like, oh, I want to be married one day. I want to have children. I'm going to go to school and get all these degrees. I'm going to be, you know, work in the medical field. I'm going to do this. It it was never any of that. It was, it was, I don't want to have a baby at 16 Mm -hmm. because I was told you're going to be just like your mom. I was told, Mm -hmm. you you know, and so it was like, oh, I don't want to be like my mom. So and then I know that the, the most damaging thing for her was she had me at 16. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Now, I, and I, like I said, I definitely can relate and kids don't come with a manual, but you do know Mm-mm. what you don't want to do, you know? Right. And I have a 23 and soon to be 27 year old. Mm. And I've always said, I've always raised them completely opposite of me. I was always a safe place to fall. I was always the one to say, yeah, you come to me, safe place, but I will tell you what's really going on, the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, I instilled, because I always felt like I had no direction, like from a little baby, I always told my my, um, youngest daughter that she's going to be a doctor. She's in medical school. The Mm -hmm. oldest one, I always whispered that she wanted to be a lawyer. She didn't listen to me, but she's a biomedical engineer. So it's like, I know. So it's all, it's, I knew, I didn't know what I, to be honest with you, I just knew that I wanted something completely different and I wanted to change generational curses, you know? Um, And I think that I I was successful 
Of course, I'm not perfect. I told them yeah. whatever I did, <laughs> you know, whatever I did growing up is always important for us to talk about it or whatever. But yeah, you're you're on the road, Latoya. I'm definitely, definitely. Look, and my favorite line is I like to say I'm trying. I am trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not going to be perfect. No, we are right. not going to be perfect. And I, like, I, I own up to everything I wasn't perfect about, but it's trying. It's, mm-hmm. it's trying. So I love that. So uh, moving to your career, you're an optician, or tell me a little bit about your career. So I'm an optician. Optician, um, okay. Optician, thank you. obstetrician, they deliver the babies. I'm, I'm on the <laughs> other end. I always make that joke and people are like, what? I'm on the other end. I'm on the top side. Oh, as an optician, I fill yeah. the prescription for glasses and contacts. Okay. Um, uh, here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I am a mobile optician, nice. uh, pretty much doing uh, filling prescriptions. I want people to know that there's more than one way to select your glasses. Uh, okay. I also have a master's degree in health science, so most opticians don't have that. So that's really what sets me apart. Okay. I allowed, I obtained my degree to further my business. Okay. Um, to be able to learn how to do market research and things of that nature. And in market research, most people have anxiety when choosing glasses. They feel rushed. They feel uh, the need to just choose something. They think it's just a mundane thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I off, Amongst the optician community, I often joke and say, a person who only has one pair of glasses, I'm going to assume you just have one shirt. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's my joke. <laughs> um, and the reason why I say that is because right, not just because I'm an optician, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, most people visual needs cannot be bound to just one pair of glasses. Okay. So you need a pair for work. You need a pair when you go out, maybe mm-hmm. you might be a contact lens wearer and you don't like taking pictures with glasses. You want to wear contacts. Mm-hmm. It, if we start looking at it more as a medical necessity or just something mundane, it can really be extraordinary. And then I, for me, because at top notch eyewear, you will see the difference because the difference is seeing top notch. And that's not just in the way that you would see visually, but the interaction with me as the optician, the mm-hmm. service that I provide, the collection that I offer, um, okay. which is my own uh, curated brand um, of colors and designs and shapes. And it's really, it's really funky. It's really different. There's some classic, classic pieces in there for the people who don't like something so funky, mm-hmm. but what's the purpose of getting a pair of glasses if it's not going to be the top, the top of the top notch, that's you know right. what I'm saying? So yeah, that's what I do. And also too, I want people to be educated in what they choose. There are so many people mm-hmm. that wear glasses and they have no clue. You, you, I don't need you to know about your prescription, but what mm-hmm. type of lens do you wear? What type of lens do you even want? Okay. And so, yeah, at the end of the day, that's something that I really, really, it's my heart's desire Mm -hmm. Um, It's my heart's passion. I've been in business since 2013. And of course, not without obstacles. Mm -hmm. Um, I was working a job, funny story, sidebar, almost lost my job because of my business, because I was working at a place where I was an op, I was an optical technician. Okay. And so it's pretty much like a lower grade of an optician. I hadn't had, I hadn't secured my license yet, but and my business wasn't even as grand as it was. It was just, I used to get a lot of the designer brands of sunglasses for myself. And I just mm-hmm. started selling them on eBay to get a little extra money. Mm-hmm. And it turned in, it, from this small thing of seven, humble beginnings, seven little pairs of sunglasses, designer sunglasses I'm selling on eBay, right? Mm-hmm. I get pulled to the side and I was like, hey, we hear you have a business. Um, did you know that's a conflict of interest? And I was like, no, I didn't. And so they kind of told me to cease it. And so most of the people who know me growing in my business know that I've always been in the glasses thing. But then Mm -hmm. I added phone cases to it, iPhone cases, because that was like a big thing at one point. And so it was like top notch eyewear. It was like a play on the name. Mm -hmm. And so I was selling phone cases, doing all these pop up shops, and that even got grand. And it just brings me back to brings back to my remembrance. When God calls you to do something, you can still do it and he will still bless it. That's right. And so, yeah, I was doing wholesale orders for boutiques in Atlanta. Like it got wow. big. And that was from 2012. I incorporated my business in 2013, but 2012 was when I uh, like put the idea together and started. Mm-hmm. And um, I had my son in 2014 and then postpartum depression happened okay and lack of proper support I was just going to give up on the business altogether and I just was working I had got my bachelor's Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm gonna just go back to school because I know how to school. I love school. I'm a mm-hmm. lifelong learner. And um, I've been full-time top-notch hour since 2018, ending of 2018. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's like, I, I couldn't let that vision, that dream die. Um, okay. And even moving, transitioning from a full-time job, I was working six days a week to a part-time job working four days a week. Mm-hmm. I still kind of top-notch eyewear here and there. I would get personal orders. I would do photo shoots and things like that. Mm-hmm. But then it, it wasn't fulfilling enough. Okay. And so I was brought back to my heart's passion, what, maybe four years later? Yeah, mm-hmm. so. <laughs> wow, wow. So what is your, what are the steps to becoming an opt say it again optician optician right? optician yes. so yes. it varies state to state but in the okay. state of florida we are a licensed state there are some states that are not licensed i know like washington mm-hmm. the state is not licensed california is not licensed um but i have two things here i'm a national contact lens examiner certified mm-hmm. and american board of opticianry certified so in most states well mm-hmm. in all the states that counts that's enough Okay. Um, in Florida, you would have to do, it's a two-year program at Broward, Co- Broward College. Back when I was in it, it was Broward Community College, but okay. Broward College. Um, and then it's a two-year vocational program, like a tech uh, associates in science and vision mm-hmm. care technology. They set you up to take your ABO and NCLE, the certifications. And with those two certifications and your degree, mm-hmm. then you can apply to become licensed and you take a state board. Okay. Okay. And then you just, we renew our state license every two years. But in other states, like say I wanted to up and leave here, I'm nationally certified. I keep up those accreditations nice. and I could definitely be doing what, the, what I'm doing here somewhere else. Okay. Okay. Because I know that we, I usually don't hear a lot about that field. And I'm mm-hmm. sure that there's plenty of African-American um, girls or young adults that or may be interested in it. So thank you for letting us know about that. Yeah, it's actually a, a pretty big community. It's a small knit community. So I've okay. gotten jobs where it's like doctors talking to doctors because it's the optician, the yeah. optometrist, yeah. and then, you know, the ophthalmologist. And then in between opticianry, there's like certified mm-hmm. optical techs, which are people who do like the pre-testing Okay. Um, people who help with other little machinery that's in, in opticals. Um, mm-hmm. but most times the opticals are owned by eye doctors. So okay. you wouldn't need a license if you're working with an eye doctor, but to work independently, you would need some type of certification, some type of licensing. And I actually okay. was featured in Broward College's alumni on their YouTube nice. um as one of their shining alumni. Mm-hmm. So that was really that was interesting. And and I let I I'm always humbled by the fact that people do take notice. Even like with you, it was like, oh, I'll do that. And I was just published in a, like an, op, an optician magazine mm-hmm. um, and they're an award-winning magazine. So I was like, oh, okay, well, people are, it, yes. the, the notice is there. And even when you're not trying, I, I just know, you know, I'm always humbled by the fact that people are taking notice mm-hmm. and I'm on the right track and I'm doing what I love. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. Now let's, Tell we I, I want to rewind a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. I noticed that you said that you went through postpartum depression. Oh yeah. Tell me a little that, bit about that and how you were able to pull yourself out of that. Ooh, it is a journey. Mm-hmm. Um the thing is you don't know it's postpartum until after the fact. Mm-hmm. Um and the effects of it. So I, having a master's degree in health science allows me, uh, opens up a whole nother door of research for me, right? Okay. And so people think health science, they think eating right and all of this. No, it's the, the science behind just life in general. So it's like a life science degree. Okay. Um, your living conditions, uh, your parents, um, <laughs> just life in general. And so I know with having my son the way that I handled postpartum with him was I breastfed him till no end. Okay. I was more clingy because most people see postpartum they're like, oh, you don't want to be around your baby. You don't want to, you don't want to. That wasn't the case. It was, I forced myself, tried Mm -hmm. to force myself out of it through breastfeeding him, which Mm -hmm. actually was not the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Breastfeeding does help reduce postpartum depression. And so I dove into that. Okay. Um, I didn't have interest in things that I loved anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I also had to go back to work at like 12 weeks. So Mm -hmm. with my daughter, I was able to stay home with her for nine months, for like Mm -hmm. nine months of her life. And then I went back to work like after she was like nine months, 10 months Mm -hmm. with my son, I had to go back to work at 12 weeks. So it was very hard to pull myself out of that rut at work um, and still work Mm -hmm. and um, pumping breast milk, (laughs) crying in the bathroom. Lots of cry was lots of crying, Mm -hmm. Um, lots of crying to myself, Mm -hmm. really. Um, yeah, the postpartum depression, like I didn't, it just was a place where it was a, it was like a suffering in silence moment, okay. um, where it just really was, it was heavy. Cause it's like, I'm a mom. And then you feel guilty cause you don't have as much time for the other child. Mm-hmm. And so there was like all this mom guilt, which we don't talk about a lot. That mom guilt is heavy. Mm-hmm. So it was like mom guilt and you know, the guilt of not being able to be with my son as much as my daughter. And yeah. it was just, it was, it was, it was, it was a dark place. And I want to say it lasted for maybe, uh, it lasted probably about a year. Okay. And then there's moments, even though they're like seven years old, there's moments because I'm in therapy. So very okay. much pro therapy, okay. but there's moments, mm-hmm. um, where you don't know you really just don't know when those moments come or why they come Mm -hmm. um so it comes in waves and I learned you just kind of ride the wave you don't try to like don't let it drown you yes and it goes back to what I said earlier uh overcoming obstacles is something that I'm trying to transition away from and it's more so building endurance for the next Mm -hmm. obstacle it's a relay race it's really a relay race you got to keep running past the baton and keep going Mm-hmm. but you're building up endurance and you know maybe I got to run a little faster maybe mm-hmm. I got to run a little slower but you learn to uh get past it and not just overcome it because you, right. you got to look back at some point <laughs> mm, that is right that is right wow thank you for sharing that thank you no problem thank you did you just one other question did did therapy help you with postpartum depression or like if someone was going through this right now they're in the midst of it what would you suggest that they do? I would suggest have a support system and whatever that okay. looks like. Um, a lot of times we try to find support in social media. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, actually have a social support system in person, somebody you trust, okay. um, speak with your, your like say you, ha- you have a baby, so we're talking postpartum, talk to your, to your OBGYN about it. Okay. Um, talk to your breastfeeding. If you're breastfeeding, talk to your breastfeeding coach about it. I'm also a WIC certified breastfeeding uh, oh. peer counselor. Okay. Um, that's something that I do. It's it, I haven't made it a nonprofit yet. I plan to, but it's mm-hmm. just something I do. It's a heart's passion because most people don't have the support that they need. Mm-hmm. Um, and WIC is so overwhelmed with, you know, so many other things. So that individual support, really hearing them out, hearing their concerns and understanding how to meet the need. But if you have a breastfeeding coach, talk to them about it. if you have a doula, because that's mm-hmm. like the new wave too right yes. now. Um, doulas are on the rise. Um, talk to your doula, talk to your OB, mm-hmm. even your pediatrician, your child's doctor. Um, and then they should be able to allocate you with some resources. Uh, because honestly, I did not. I'm only in therapy now. I've only been in therapy like two years. Okay. Um, but like my therapist told me therapy is a relay race, right? So you have therapy for different moments in your life. Mm -hmm. Uh, But find that support, find the resources, talk to the professionals Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, it's okay. It is okay. (laughs) It will be okay. Yes, exactly. And it's okay to admit that you need help. I always say that it's okay. Especially as a mom, you know, we... (laughs) We got to know when we need help, take a step back and let somebody else help because we cannot do it all. We were not designed to do it all. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that, and that's another mentality I'm unlearning. I don't have to do it all Mm -hmm. by myself. Hey, I'm calling my mom. I told my mom the other day, I was like, my inner child needs a hug, you know, (laughs) listen, I I love all my kids. I hug them, but also too, I got to create those healthy boundaries. Mommy needs some space. Yes. Mommy need to, mommy gonna go take a walk for, give me a second. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I don't have to like try to do it all and be the, the end all be all the beginning Mm -hmm. and the end. I don't have to. 
Sometimes I could just meet in the middle. Sometimes mm-hmm. I could just stand back and watch. <laughs> That's right. So true. So true, Latoya. It was so nice talking to you, Latoya. Where can we Thank where you. can we um, find you online? I am everywhere. You can find Top Notch Eyewear. I prefer you find that way because most of the social media of my personal social media, is, you okay. won't just see business anyways. So mm-hmm. you can find me Top Notch Eyewear on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter mm-hmm. at Top Notch Eye. Um, mm-hmm. Just you could just, this might sound a little bougie, but you could just Google me. <laughs> 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 so you Google Top Notch Eyewear. Here, okay. the, I don't know if we, this is going to be video, but there's a symbol. It's like a blue and orange. <laughs> and I rock my brand colors uh, like that. all the time. Um, okay. But yeah, that's where you can find me. And if you just Google Latoya Appleton Kinsey, Mm-hmm. You'll find me, Amazon books, breastfeeding, all those good things. Um, mm-hmm. And there's more great things to come um, that I pray for in the future. Nice. One last question, Latoya. Um, yes. Inspiration. What is one thing that you want to tell women that may be going through something that is considered being in the valley, um, that mm-hmm. they're having a hard time? What, what would be and your advice? My advice that all things work together because that (laughs) whether you believe in God or you don't, we have to know that all things are working together for our good. Because at the end of the day, if we didn't have any bad things happen to us, right? And I'm always reflecting. So the inspiration I will tell you, reflect. Reflection will be your best inspiration. And I'm saying that now, and that's the first time I've ever said that in that way. And so it's for me, reflection will be your best inspiration. So if you could think about the things that you made it out of in those, in those valley times, you know, the mountain is not that far. Um, And again, it goes back to don't focus on just being that overcomer, but focus on the endurance, focus on the endurance. Um, Yeah, that's my inspiration. (laughs) Um, reflection is the best inspiration (laughs) that's right it's truly truly been a pleasure Latoya and thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to chat with me thank you so much no problem thank you for having me I look forward I look forward to doing this again yes hey everyone this is coach Clayton and I hope you enjoyed this episode of women empowering women Please don't forget to subscribe or follow me for more interesting interviews and life advice tips.